This is Daniel Hall. I'm a tableau instructor and economics professor at High Point University. I'm here to teach you about the new Tableau data model uh, that's coming out with Tableau versions 2020.2 and ongoing. All the documentation that you need uh, for this exercise is linked to my Tableau public profile in the new Tableau data model bookshop data set. It's one of my featured visualizations um, at the time this video is recorded. Um, in it, you'll in the dashboard, you'll find a link to this video tutorial to the bookshop data set documentation provided by Tableau, uh, a link to the bar charts that I created in this Tableau workbook using all tables and the bar charts using some of the tables. Okay. Also here is an example of the logical layer and the physical layer um, in the Tableau data model for the bookshop example. And if you click on the pictures, it'll take you to further documentation on using relationships and on using the new Tableau data model. Okay. All right. So. What is the newest and most important thing? Well, it's this logical layer. It's been added on top of the physical layer that you are used to, okay? And so what I'm going to do the rest of the video is create this logical layer um, from the bookshop Excel file and also the physical layer um, that this is an example of the book join. And then I'm going to create the bar chart using all tables and the book bar chart using some tables. So let's begin. All right, I've already got the data source connected, um, the bookshop Excel data. And I'm going to drag book to the view. And that is because it is the table of the that has the most connections out of these 13 tables in this one Excel file. So we're working with one data connection here. And we are going to build out our relationships in this logical layer using logical tables here. Okay. Um, but before we do that, I want to actually take this logical table book and construct two physical tables that define it. And so I'm going to double click this. As you can see, already the physical table book defines the logical table book, okay? And so I'm gonna add info to this. And if I do so, I can union it or create a join like I would in previous versions of Tableau. All right, so I'm gonna do an inner join and I'm gonna use book ID as my um, joining field. Now for info, what do we have available? We don't have book ID, and so we're going to create a join calculation that concatenates book ID 1 and book ID 2. Okay. All right, and so you can see with the join, we have actually merged these two tables with an inner join with a common field there. All right, I'm going to close the physical layer and go back up to the logical layer because these two physical tables are now merged and defines the logical table book. All right, cool. Yes, I still need more data. Um, so I'm going to drag a new table to this. Okay, now I'm going to copy this entity relationship diagram or data model as Tableau might call it. And I'm going to drag this to the right side so you can kind of view in a side by side display. Let's take away some of that real estate there. Okay, so what we can do is um, we've already formed this inner container, this container book that has an inner join between book and info on the book ID field. All these other tables, edition, author, series, ratings, checkouts, and award 
can now be linked to the logical table book without doing a formal join. Okay, it is going to do something similar to a data blend in the sense that the tables will still exist independently, but they will have a linking field as shown by the diagram. Try to make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and add addition. And as you can see here, we got these little squiggly things when you form the connections, they're called noodles. And it's automatically gonna guess the best relationship of the linking field. It also has the most liberal um, cardinality options, many to many. And it's also um, basically doing what a full outer join would do. It keeps all the records for both tables, except instead of merging the tables, they exist independently. OK, because when I close this and I click on book, I only get the book columns. And when I click on addition, I only get the addition columns. OK, so let's add the others. Author. And all these fields are linking correctly. I checked in advance. Um, award. Checkouts. Ratings. And series. OK. So let's make this a little bit, the table a little bit smaller so you can see everything that's in here. Okay, so so far we've joined all, connected all of the tables to the left, everything except for the tables on the very right here. So we've got eight of the 13 tables connected. Well, the remaining tables connect to the addition logical table. Okay, so I can scroll over, click to focus on the addition table. And I'm going to connect publisher and the sales of for the first quarter. Okay. All right, so I guessed everything correctly here. Okay, but you'll notice here that we've got a union icon in this. Um, model here and so we need to actually union the sales for all four quarters over here okay so we have the logical layer on top in which is also known as the relations ca relationship canvas okay and then below it we have the physical layer which is also known as the join canvas okay so you can only connect logical tables using relationships at the logical layer, and you can only join physical tables at the physical layer. But what about unions? Well, let's see. It looks like I can union at the logical layer. Cool. What about the physical layer? Double click. This looks more familiar, right? Let's add quarter three to quarters one and two. So I can union at the physical layer as well. Let's click back. Oh, okay. I wonder if I can go back now. Oh, I can union at the logical layer. So I can union tables at the physical layer or the logical layer, doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have this relationship set up. I can now maximize this and take a look. Okay. All right, so here is our data model. And as you can see, every time you click on a logical table, you're gonna get just the columns for that table. And you can choose to clean this up and hide the columns that you don't need, just like you would previously. Um, I'm gonna leave them as is because I want to make a quick fizz. 
So I'm going to go to the worksheet and I'm going to create a viz that I call bar charts. Okay. And I'm going to do my bar charts based on the author name. Oh, I don't have author name here. Okay. But I can create a calculated field, so I'm going to do that. Okay, drag that to rows. Okay, now you might notice a few things look different. Okay, but first let's focus on things that have not changed. You still have measure names for all the measures of all the tables uh, that you have with this data source. Okay, you still have measure values representing all the measure values. Um, for all these fields in this data source. Okay, so I'm going to drag measure values to columns here. Okay, and I'm going to filter based on measure names. And I'm going to use the drop down. I'm actually going to use a single value list here. Okay. And so I want to see which authors have simply written the most pages. And so I'm going to do that. Sort descending. And I don't need this field label anymore. Drop that. Don't need the values. Kick that. And don't care about the nulls right now. OK. All right. So. This is using all of the data here because I can easily switch using different measures across these tables. Okay. All right. Now let's duplicate this. And I'm going to just use some of the tables because right now I'm only interested in the count of sales, okay, and the price. Okay. So if I rename this just on, I want to go to price, and I don't want the sum of price, I want the average price. Well, when you do this, all of a sudden, you're not using all the values. You're just using some of the values. And so I'm going to now um, add one more field here. And I'm going to add to size the number of sales. So I want this to be sorted based on the price and the size of the bar to be dictated by, based on the number of sales. OK. All right, so if I click on, say, this fat bar here, you'll see when I let go to view data, you'll see that it's, it's showing that I'm using these columns, author name, average price, count of sales, and I'm using the book table, the and the addition, and the sales table. Okay, so I'm using I'm sorry using the author table, the addition table, and the sales table. So I'm only using the data that I need. Okay, and this is going to allow my visualizations to be rendered faster. And so that's the unique feature of this. Now, while you're looking at this, one other thing about the data pane is that the is no, there's no longer a number of records um, for the entire table or the entire data, data source here. You actually have number of records stored 
locally at the logical table for each logical table. So you can see series count for the series table, sales count for the sales table, ratings count for ratings table, and so on. Okay. And so now you can do a count at the logical table there. Also, to clear up space, you might also note that um, there is no longer the separation of dimensions and measures at the data source level. Now it's being separated at the logical table level. So you can see this little divider line between all of these um, logical tables here. And if I try to just move publication date here, let me make this just a little bit bigger. If I try to move publication date here, or prices, there we go. If I do it just right, you can see that I've got dimensions up top and measures down below. That's true, it's just it's restarting after each table. And I like this view a little bit better because now when I collapse all these tables, I only see them once. I don't see them once for dimensions and I don't see them once again for measures. So each logical table only shows up once. And so you'll notice that in the table view, it's being sorted based on the logical tables. And within those logical tables, you're going to get a count and you're going to get a separation of dimensions up top and measures down below. So I hope that these new features with um, Tableau 2020.2 and up is going to make it easier for you to conceptualize your data visualizations, do more data exploration, and only use the data that you need. Hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Have a great day and happy visiting.